what's funny about it is this is not, I'm not trying to come over and be like some radical belief guy. Like I said, I didn't grow up in church. I just started seeing people winning and thought that looks attractive. And then they were like, Hey, if you read the Bible, it tells you how to do it. So I just started reading the Bible and I was like, yep, sure enough. It's all in here. Mm-hmm. So I'm not coming up. I'm not trying to come across as like some dude out of left field. I'm just like, I, I guess in a way, um, I didn't have anything to unlearn. I didn't have any uh, religious stuff to, to unlearn. I just got to learn from what the book said. Same here. And -hmm. and it's, well, yeah. And and look at your life. You're winning. Imagine that. So like Romans 5, 17 is a good one. And again, this, this Bible I got in front of me is is the amplified Bible. Okay. But what it's talking about here is when Adam sinned, sin came into the whole world. But when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, righteousness came into the whole world. It made available to everybody. So all that means is you are in right standing with God right now. The reason a lot of Christians have money hangups is they don't actually know that or believe that. And what they do is they think that their financial situation is a consequence for something they've done wrong, something they've screwed up. I haven't been a good steward. And so I'm paying the price for my bad performance, which is not scriptural it is not scriptural that's not how it works so romans 5 17 like i said he's just talking that because of jesus one man's obedience everybody has access to salvation now if you accept him as your lord and savior and it goes on to say that through this one man we can reign as kings in this life through jesus christ i can reign as a king in this life not as a beggar this life Yeah. yeah the bible is full of this if you come at it from this perspective of god's got my back God wants me to win. He's equipped me with everything I need to win. All right, God, now what's my marching orders? Where do you want me to go win? That's how I operate. I feel like we've been equipped for everything. You guys, you've heard the, you know, the saying we're we're in the Lord's army, right? Uh Well, if that's true, and and the Bible does say that we are citizens of heaven. So the way I look at it is I've been deployed like a soldier. Let's just say uh, the Bible says we can, we can have 120 year lifespan um for sake of conversation we'll say i got 100 years 1984 to 2084 okay what am i going to do with my deployment what am i going to do while i'm down here god's equipped me right you're in someone's army you're equipped with everything you need to be successful you're equipped with the finances you need you're equipped with the weapons you need you're equipped with the all the stuff and he pays for it okay i'm equipped let's go let's roll what are we doing lord what's my marching orders and he's up there man i already told you be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue, dominate. Let's get after it. Let's expand this kingdom. Mm. And you'll find things that are on your heart. You've got it. You've got those, those ideas. You already know what you want to do. Most of you haven't given yourself permission to do them. The thing with money, the thing that we have to be careful about is there's this spirit of mammon attached to it. Talks about this. Jesus teaches this in Matthew 6, 24. And basically what he says is, man, it's an opposing spirit. It's trying to get you to take orders from it. And it says you can't serve both masters. So money's going to try to be a master. God's going to try to be your master, but you ultimately pick which one you'll serve. And serve just means take orders from. Which one will you take orders from? So here's, um, here's I would love to interject here because this is something I would like some clarity on for myself, is yeah. that topic of the spirit of mammon. So you're saying there's a spirit, an opposing force to, to God's will over the resource we call money right now is is that satan the devil um or or is it separate from him one of his one of his crew mm-hmm. operating kind of took over that system of, of of money i would love to get some clarity there i think that's going to really help some christians kind of break free because you yeah you know, I'll, I'll lead to the second thing i was going to bring up i don't want to forget it but you did bring up a cultural sensitivity as it relates to curses uh or people well, Christians say I'm cursed because dad and my father's father and mm. and now I'm experiencing and I and I would say maybe there's some level of truth to this. I, I me being a Puerto Rican Colombian and I know in the black community you hear this spoken more than mm. than when I talk to Koreans or Asians. Um, you just don't hear that. Uh, even some white folks uh, clients I have and even even Indians like. There's certain cultures that I hear it predominantly expressed more like, oh, there's a family curse. Definitely hear that in the Spanish community. Definitely hear that in the black community. And I've even been in church where where it's 
some pastors touch on curses, like in the Bible, even God, you know, cursing that generation, da da da, you know, cursing, like, okay, maybe there's some, definitely some scripture here, but was God talking to you or was he talking to a specific group at a specific time, giving a, pres- mm-hmm. a specific prescription? Like, let's, I want I want to draw that distinction there. So that, that's later, but the okay. first part Remind me about that. the, yeah, the first part, <laughs> the first part, the spirit of mammon, is that Satan? controlling yeah. that uh, you know did he deliver his crew, uh, a crew member to take over that department of, of mammon what, what's going on there yeah well so it, it it talks about if you look up that word mammon it's got a couple definitions and it says the first one is and this is so powerful riches personified as opposed to god so i i picture a a, a man dressed like money riches personified in the form of a person and opposed to god now I believe Satan is behind all of this. Absolutely. Okay. Maybe it is one of the crew, but we know that it originates from him. The other definition is here in the Amplified Bible. It tells you that money is, or mammon is deceitful riches. It can be money. It can be possessions. It can be whatever is trusted in. And then another translation says, whatever is valued more than God. I think most of us watching this would say, I don't do that. I don't serve money. I don't value money more than God. Mm -hmm. yet i think our words and our actions might say otherwise Otherwise. Mm -hmm. mentally serve the lord but if i was to offer you a five hundred thousand dollar job but you had to move to tulsa and you had to uproot your family from your church and your kids from their schools and your wife your spouse from her friends and her family and you were you know teaching the sunday school over there and you were volunteering and you plugged in and you had a life but you moved for a paycheck and you got over here even though god had you planted at that church and that location and that group you moved over here but oh perhaps it's such a great opportunity though mm-hmm. i had to take it. yeah w- w- without even consulting the father before making that before saying yes to that opportunity we didn't even exactly. consult with with the father first we immediately you know jumped on it and next thing you know your kids don't have any friends you're looking for a church, you were plugged in, now you don't really find one that fits, right? I've, I've seen this play out many, many times. Yeah. And a lot of times they move back, a lot of times they fall away. It's things like this, that's a, maybe an extreme example, some of you guys have experienced. It's things like this where it's like, wait, I'm taking orders from money all the time. I knew in my heart when I prayed, I was supposed to do this decision, but I took this job because it paid more or i bought this thing because it was cheaper though this is the one i really wanted my spouse wanted this vacation but i could save some money if i took us on this vacation all day long we're making money led decisions and i could keep going the gas you put in your car you go to the restaurant you want the steak but the chicken is 15 bucks cheaper so you get the chicken right Mm -hmm. you get the off-brand oreos even though they taste disgusting right We, we do this stuff all the time and we have to become more aware of it. It's why a lot of us have hangups that we shouldn't have. Is we're just not doing what the book said to do. So you can win here, you can win now and after. That's like that's the the, the premise here through op- basics through operating in God's kingdom rather than the world. Then we move into serving one master, understanding that as much as we claim with our mouths and our thoughts that that we love and serve God and no one's no one's attacking that here right we we I always let my audience know that I was like I'm not attacking your faith about your belief in God it's your it's your body your actions that are doing a different thing and and when you review what you just made about that decision I bet you feel bad about it or you're like praying over it God I hope this works out God, please mm-hmm. make this work. And it's like, well, you didn't consult with him in the first place of that major financial decision or even yeah. or even your daily financial decisions. And I think a great place logically here, if I might want to jack, interject here on myself is, as I say, look, um, let's start small. Like what are some small things that we can consult with the father on? Yeah. Uh, whether it's the gas you choose to put in, um, the subscription you choose to enroll in, the restaurant you choose to go to, like what if yeah. you just started practicing little there? Hey God, where would you like me to go to dinner tonight? You want me to cook in? You want me to go out? What would you prefer? Dude, that, Something that's, simple. Yeah, <laughs> I like, I do that stuff. I do that stuff. So yeah. like Matthew 6, 24 is where we were just reading about mammon. What's cool is if you guys read, if y'all watching this want to read from Matthew 
6, 19 through 34, he's talking, the whole thing is about money, money worries, worrying about necessities, worrying about these types of things. And what's cool is when you get to verse 33, he kind of touches on this. And he says, look, instead of being worried about all the stuff in life, how are you going to pay your bills? He says, don't do that one. He says, don't worry. Don't worry saying, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do this? What are we going to do? How's it going to happen? He just says, hey, seek the kingdom of God first. And it tells you in here that that's his way of doing things and his way of being right. So if you seek the kingdom first, what do you want me to do here? I'm coming to you first. What is your way of doing things? It says he will add all that other stuff you're worried about. He'll just add it to you. He'll just give, he'll just get you that stuff. Instead of worrying about the stuff, just go to God, get your strategy, execute the strategy. He'll supply you. It keeps you out of worry. It keeps you out of all of that anxiety and all of that junk that goes with it. Man, we can truly live a carefree life by following this method here. Just so in case anybody's wondering, this does not mean you won't make a ton of money. Correct. <laughs> you can be wildly successful and wealthy and prosperous and abundant living for the Lord. In fact, it's the best way to do it. It's like the scripture we started with that Proverbs 10, 22, the mm -hmm. blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Mm -hmm. Let's just do that. So to answer your question, I think that's a great idea. Hey God, where should we go on date night tonight with my spouse? Hey, what should we do here? Hey, I'm just asking them these questions. Proverbs 3, 5 and 3, 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge and recognize him and he will make straight and plain your paths. Meaning he'll just direct your paths to show you which one to take. So in all your ways, acknowledge him, recognize him. He's, he's here to help you. That's yeah. the best part. Big time.